Good morning, Peaches and students. I'm Amanda Felipe. And I'm Patty Vasquez, and you're watching Mass TV. November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Eli Aleman and crew secured an empowering story featuring one of our very own teachers' journey here at Mass. Okay. Ready? Yes. So my mom was diagnosed September of 2015. That day, um, I was devastated. I, it, actually, it was kind of just unreal, to be honest with you. It, it took me a couple of days to digest, to even process what was going on. In June of 2016, she had the Whipple procedure done and she was cancer free. Once they did the biopsy, um, which was a month after the diagnosis that we got the results, then I took on the attitude of, okay, we're gonna beat this, we're gonna fight, you know? And I just started researching and just looking into different clinical trials. And then she was re-diagnosed March of 2018. I was actually in my office when I found out. Um, it was March of this year, so I was in my office. My mom had emailed me the CT report, and we were supposed to meet with the doctor. And she had emailed, she goes, oh, you know, read the report and let me know of any questions you're going to come up with. And I just cried. I cried in my office. Um, I think what helped me get through that, the rest of that day was that a lot of the students came in just because they needed something from me or, you know, and they took, they were, help, they were able to take me out of a place that I didn't want to be at. You know, I have to say that I'm very grateful to the staff, um, the students. You guys have really taken me out of some very, very negative days. Well, honestly, it kind of hit me hard the first week that I was here living in Spain, just because I'm so used to seeing mom every day and spending a lot of time with her. So it kind of makes me sad, but I get to talk to her every now and then. So one of the things that people can do is register with PanCan. Dot org. It's an organization that actually works towards pancreatic uh, cancer awareness. Well, I'm hoping that the students will be able to identify these symptoms and maybe help one of their loved ones. You know, you know, early, early diagnosis is the key. Every day, 145 adults are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Just as we all have experienced being a new student in a new school, being a teacher in a different school is just as challenging. Here's one of our new additions to the Mass family, showing us how she has adapted to the Maverick life. Mass has seen many changes since the last school year. In addition to the ongoing construction of our new auditorium, we have also seen some new faces in the staff department. Every year, Mass welcomes at least one new face. This year, we had the opportunity to get to know Ms. Hernandez. My name is Ms. Hernandez and I teach chemistry and physical science here. What influenced you to become a teacher? What influenced me to become a teacher was that when I was taking um, chemistry one in college, I had a professor who was very, he was new and he was very outgoing. I liked the way he taught um, and he kind of inspired me to become a teacher and to teach the way he taught and I kind of tried to model what he did in my classroom. How's your experience in math been so far? Um, it's been good, it's been good. It's different because when you come here, it's like, Kind of like High School Musical. I heard some, a teacher saying that. Um, That's true. You walk down the hallways and you see kids playing um, their instruments. You see kids singing, acting. I go home and I'm like, hey, everybody's here singing. Um, so it's, it's cool. It's nice. What are the resources you may need to become a better teacher? Um, I think that resources would be more strategies, especially chemistry. A lot of kids, science, they feel like chemistry is a boring um, topic. Mm. So I think resources would be something that's more engaging, maybe different strategies. I know when I went to a workshop, um, they were talking about kind of having a snowball fight. Um, that is not a snowball fight, you just throw ideas to the center of the room in little crumbled papers and then you pick them up and you read and it's kind of like an interactive way of learning yeah. and it kind of wakes up the kids. 
Um, what advice would you give to teachers moving to a new school? So when you move to a new school, I would suggest for you guys to come with an open mind. Um, you're moving to a new school, so it's going to be different type of students, different staff. Um, so be welcoming and kind of you come in, so you have to also um, join the family that you're joining. You know, yeah. um, interact with them, join clubs, not just stay in your little room by yourself, interact with people. Let's continue to give a warm welcome to Ms. Hernandez and all the other new members of the Mass family. There's no doubt she's causing quite the stir in the science department. Now to a PSA about last week's blood drive with Rebecca Lalama and Natalie Perez. Did you know that 7% of our body fat is actually made out of blood? Here at Miami Art Studios first ever blood drive, teachers and students are walking back and forth to donate one pint of blood to save three to four lives. I'm Rebecca Lalama reporting right here in front of the Big Red Bus. There are over 200 Big Red Buses on the road every day. Get on board of the bus and be a hero in your community. Majority of first time donors believe that the process causes a small amount of pain when the needle is inserted in your arm. We interviewed Kalia Torres on her experience of being a first time donor. Well, contrary to common belief, um, donating blood, it didn't hurt at all. You didn't really feel anything other than when the needle originally went in. Um, honestly, it was such a rewarding experience knowing that I donated a unit of blood and then that unit of blood is gonna save three to four lives. One Blood is South Florida's largest nonprofit blood donation organization. Many citizens donate blood to help others who have been in a car accident and for many other medical reasons. Sometimes when you donate blood, a gift for giving back might come with. Luckily for me, being the age of 17 and having a parent consent form brought back to the school, I was able to donate blood and help save lives. If you aren't able to donate this time, don't worry, there's future blood drives happening in January, March, and June. We hope to see you at the next one. I'm Rebecca Lalama, signing off. Thanks for watching. This has been Mass TV. Make sure to subscribe down below to watch our future videos. I'm Amanda Felipe. And I'm Patty Vasquez, signing off.